In this video, we're learning about the three main operating systems as well as what differentiates them. Like this video if it's helpful, comment down below with your thoughts, and subscribe for more content that really helps a small channel like mine to grow. If you're familiar with the world of IT, you probably already know that there are several different kinds of operating systems. So what we want to do is we want to clearly differentiate the three main operating systems that you'll encounter. Bear in mind that these different operating systems can serve different purposes. For instance, some are created primarily for non-technical people, and some are created for technical people that work in production or in development. We'll kind of go through that and we'll, we'll identify which operating systems might be right for you. An important thing to keep in mind is that different operating systems come in different flavors, but they're known as distributions. So you will have, especially with Linux, different kinds of distributions that serve different purpose. However, they are all built on a Linux background. Also remember that these operating systems can be hosted in different kinds of environments. For instance, if you have a home lab, link right here, they can be hosted in a virtual environment or in a physical environment. Uh, if you work in a, you know, a development or a production environment and you're wondering what kind of operating system you would like to deploy, well, you can bear that in mind. You can use a different operating system for your bare metal and also, uh, which is to say, you can install the, the operating system directly to the hardware itself. And then in a virtual environment, you can host a virtual machine using a particular operating system. Now, let's talk about the three main operating systems. That would be Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. First, we're gonna start with the most popular operating system in the world, Windows. Now, it may not necessarily be the most popular, but it is the most widely used. In fact, over 70% of the world runs on Windows. Windows is, of course, made by Microsoft. In order to use it, you need a license. Now, if you buy a new computer, it probably already has Windows installed onto the, uh, onto the host system. However, if you want to use Windows in a virtual environment, in order to get the full usage out of it, you might need to purchase a license from Microsoft. Now, real quick, we'll talk about the different kinds of licenses you can get because these kind of create uh, the different, you know, quote unquote distributions or, you know, different types of Windows that you end up using. The most commonly used form of Windows is Windows Home, also known as Windows Basic. And this gives you all the basic functionalities of Windows. For instance, you have a, your file system, you can you know, connect to the internet, you can you know, launch and execute applications and all those kinds of things. However, it doesn't give you full functionality in that it doesn't directly give you things like Hyper-V if you want to uh, have a virtual environment. Uh, you can't really do remote desktop. Now, if you're working in a home environment and maybe you know, you're know you non-technical and you're watching this video, you may not need those things. Uh, so that's fine. And, and the good part about Windows Home is that it is the cheapest license. So if you're deploying Windows into a large environment, Windows Home might be the solution for you for your average worker. However, if you want additional functionality, maybe you work in a more technical environment or you just want to be able to learn and grow, you can use Windows Pro, also called Windows Professional. Windows Pro is, of course, more expensive than Windows Home, but it does give you additional functionality. For instance, you get things like Hyper-V, again, for virtual machines. You get remote desktop. You can have a, a group policy management for practice with you know, Active Directory multiple accounts. You also get BitLogger for a file encryption in case you want to encrypt your entire file system, as well as a number of other functionalities. Link in the description for that. Finally, you come across Windows Business Edition, also known as Windows Enterprise. And this gives you a number of features that are better to use in a large kind of business environment or in a large professional studio, uh, including all the features that we talked about in Windows Pro, but you'll kind of come across some slight differences. The next operating system we're gonna talk about is Mac OS. Now, I'm an Apple guy, so this is personally, for my day-to-day -day usage, my favorite operating systems. No judgment in the comments. Mac OS, of course, is developed by Apple. Uh, it is native to all Apple devices. So if you're watching this on an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac or what have you, if it's made by Apple, you're probably running Mac OS. Mac OS provides a clean user experience and it also provides plenty of functionality similar to Windows, just in a bit of a cleaner, uh, in my opinion, uh, presentation. 
a lot of the functionality is presented in a GUI. So if you want to work in a graphical interface, Apple will probably be able to provide that uh, in a cleaner, more understandable, again, in my opinion, way. Uh, a lot of people prefer Windows and that's perfectly fine. There's a reason it is the most popular uh, operating system in the world. Um, but again, you know, it's clear to understand or it's important to understand the difference between Mac OS and Windows uh, and that they are not the same thing. <laughs> and, and you're not going to be able to buy a Mac and have Windows installed on it because, uh, you know, again, a Mac is an Apple product and they'll have Mac OS already installed on the system. Similar with a, a Microsoft product. Uh, you know, you can't really buy, you know, Windows computer and expect Mac OS. That's, you know, they're not the same thing. Remember that both of these have uh, all the functionality to either do it themselves. And, and, and by that, I mean, you can have, you know, things like, uh, you know, Hyper-V or BitLocker. You can have these functionalities both in Windows or in Apple devices, but, you know, you may not have that natively in some cases. For instance, with Windows Home, you don't have BitLocker or Hyper-V. Uh, so, you, But they do allow for third-party apps to handle that. The last operating system we're going to talk about is Linux. Now, if you work in a tech environment, you've most likely come across Linux. If you're not from a technical background, you may have heard about Linux, but you're not quite sure what that is. Well, fortunately, you're in the right place because we're about to talk about Linux. Linux is a free open source operating system. So whereas with Apple and, uh, and Microsoft, you, you know, you have to purchase a product or a license from either one of those in order to have access to either, you know, Windows or Mac OS, Linux, you can just get online for free. Updates are also created, you know, on a pretty routine basis by just about anybody. So uh, because it's open source, it's a very collaborative environment. Linux is for the most part used by developers and IT professionals. And we'll talk a little bit about the distributions that you can come across with with Linux because there really are quite a few. The nice thing about Linux being an open source operating system is its customization. You know, you, you come across way more, uh, you know, distributions of Linux than you would Mac OS and, and Windows just because it's open source. Everybody's able to get it for free and mess with it. Uh, and, and, the op and the code is open source, you know, so, you know, if there's a particular flaw in the operating system, you know, anybody that is involved with this collaborative open source effort can push out an update. Now let's kind of talk about some of the different distributions of Linux. The first one we're going to talk about, of course, since this is a cybersecurity uh, channel, is Kali Linux. Now, if you've heard of Kali Linux, you probably have an idea on what it is, but uh, if you haven't, it, you know, it might have evaded you. And if you haven't, then no problem, we'll talk about it. So Kali Linux is a, a distribution of Linux that is primarily geared for offensive security. It also has some nice defensive security tools in it, but mostly cybersecurity professionals will be using Kali Linux to either you know, do different forms of reconnaissance, perform a penetration test. There are a number of different tools that you can use to test your, your environment or test different uh, strategies that a cyber attacker might use. There are several other distributions like Ubuntu, which can be, it's pretty, you know, wide open. Uh, it's a form of, of Linux that, you know, there's a lot of customization you can use. Uh, it can be great in a production environment. There's Linux Mint. Uh, there's Linux uh, Scent. Uh, th these are different forms of Linux that you can use in a development or a production environment that will really help you to get you know, a pretty nice, flexible use out of your Linux system. Now, as far as hosting servers, uh, Windows has a form of a, a, a server system called Windows Server. And, and you, know, you may have come across that. There's, you know, of course, Server 2008, which is now outdated. So, and, and Windows 2012, which is also outdated. The most recent version is Windows 2016. Now with Linux, you have Apache, uh, which is a competitor to, to Windows Server. Uh, but you, it is, again, because it, Linux is open source, Windows Apache can also be open source. So uh, the, Windows Apache is a very popular operating system for web hosting. And then again, for your home lab, if you know maybe you have a Raspberry Pi, there are several different distributions for Linux that you can use there. For instance, Raspbian, Debian, and Noobs are all generally used with, uh, with Raspberry Pis. You can use most distros with uh, Raspberry Pi. For instance, in my home lab, uh, I use two Raspberry Pi Kali uh, 
uh, machines, but uh, you can use, you know, really anything you want on a Raspberry Pi. Remember that the default operating system on a Raspberry Pi generally will be Noobs, which is a pretty, you know, bare bones Linux operating system. Remember that each one of these operating systems can serve a very important role in your organization. If you're really just looking for, you know, something to be able to deploy for your workforce, Windows is probably going to be the way to go since it, uh, you know, it comes standard in just about any device you purchase. It really requires minimal configuration on setup uh, and it's easy to deploy. Uh, Mac is kind of a similar product. Uh, you know, again, these are uh, generally more expensive devices, but you know, if you want a clean user interface, that can be a good option too. However, if you're looking for a lot of flexibility and you, you have a lot of technical projects and programming you'd like to do, then a Linux uh, uh, operating system might be for you. And again, you don't necessarily have to have this flash onto the hard metal or onto the bare metal. Uh, you can host it in a virtual environment. In fact, that's probably advisable, especially in the development uh, kind of environment where you have your host operating systems, which might be a Mac or a Windows, and then you have a virtual environment that's a Linux. And that way, everything that you do is segregated from your, uh, your primary operating system. So if, you know, if anything breaks, you can just reflash your, your virtual machine and start over. Uh, you don't necessarily have to worry about completely breaking your computer. <laughs> However, just make sure that whenever you're deploying operating systems that you're deploying uh, each operating system to its maximum effectiveness. You know, you don't want to hand a Linux box over to somebody that doesn't really have a technical background. It might be okay, uh, but again, it, it, there is a bit of a learning curve. It's not necessarily as user-friendly as Windows or Mac might be. So, pop quiz time. Which version or versions of Windows uh, allows for Hyper-V? Comment down below with your answer. Like if this video was helpful and subscribe for more content I'm posting every week. Thank you.